Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video. So glad you joined us this afternoon. We're having a discussion today on futures trading. Uh, the first in a series uh, of uh, futures educational videos that we've done. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about understanding the risk profile of each individual futures contract before you might want to start trading them and how important that is before you put real money to work. Let's bring in Neil and Sean here and talk a little bit about uh, managing risk guys, but also understanding the risk profile of each individual futures contract similarly to an equity if we were going to trade an equity right. we really have to understand what we're getting into before we start absolutely and i think you know it's one of those things where if you're trading an equity sometimes it can be straightforward uh, you're, you're buying a different increment of shares you multiply it by the price and it's going to be easy to understand uh, the risk profile of your trade and when it comes to the futures it's going to be about the instrument that we uh, that we are trading and we're going to stick to the index futures here uh, so you'll hear us talking about the, the S&P 500 futures. You'll hear us talking about the NASDAQ futures as well. So uh, just leaving it with the ES, in our, one of our previous videos, we did mention the micro contract, and I want to use the differentiation between the two uh, to understand that, you know, whether you trade something which is in the micro case uh, one tenth of the risk, or you trade the E minis, which is already a subset of the of the larger futures contract that uh, that S&P uh, 500 futures uh, full contract. It's all about risk tolerance, right? So the liquidity is going to be the same. The chart is going to look the same. But it's all about the fact that if I'm looking at the micros and I have a, I'm like, just, you have a trading strategy, and I'm going to use the levels that Room was talking about this morning. He said around 31.30 he liked for a long, and he liked, and he liked about 31.60 uh, to be the top end of the range, right? So let's imagine a scenario where it dips back down in the morning, and you're looking to take a long position around 31.30, and you're willing to risk a little bit here. You've got to consider how much money you want to lose on an individual trade. Mark. And if it's only, like if you're only willing to risk $100 and on the actual E-minis, every single tick is $12.50, that means a one handle. So from $31.30 to $31.29, guys, that's going to be on one contract 50 bucks. Once you get down five handles uh, to about that 31 quarter, if that's zero, that's $250. So if you're only willing to risk $200, uh, you're not even taking one contract. But on the micros, you could do that. You could take one, two, three, four, five contracts, as long as it's going to be less than that 10 number. So it's important to understand the rules of the game. And I know this seems very, very basic. I understand that. But you know, I'm not going to point out any circumstances here, but there are lots of beginning traders who a lack of understanding of the way that it advanced security trades, whether it's a futures contract, whether it's options, has gotten people into trouble. And you've got to make sure you understand the rules of the game, especially when it comes to that risk profile. Now, the next point here, guys, is going to be understanding how much money we need if you're if you're opening a retail account when it comes to trading futures. How much money do I need to put up to trade one contract, two contracts, so on and so on? Uh, so the next thing we have to jump into uh, to here, and I'm going to go over to Sean with this one, is talking a little bit about margin and margin account, Sean. Yeah, no, great, great point. And I think this is a huge advantage, actually, to trading futures. But at the same time, uh, as we know, an advantage could also be a disadvantage. And it, it requires so much discipline if you are going to trade on margin. We've seen so many horrific stories. A lot of our viewers tell us this every day live uh, on the show and, and when we have our guest traders and whatnot. Look, margin blows accounts up. I have a little bit of a graphic here. What is margin? So margin just means something like this. Depending on the broker that you have, you can deposit anywhere from, let's use $100 because it's easy math. If you give $100, some brokerages will allow you anywhere from five to up to 100. And again, it varies, do your own research, but it 100 times the amount of money that you have deposited, you can then throw into the market and start playing around with. So what does that mean exactly? If you have $100 and you buy a futures contract, okay, and that thing ticks down against you $100. Well, you may say, well, you know what? My margin is actually times 10. So you've taken $1,000 worth of a contract. What that's going to do, if that just ticks against you 10%, guess what? 
There goes your $10, the $10 that you have on deposit. So the stock doesn't, or the futures in this case, doesn't even move against you. And this is what we're talking about right here with this graphic. This is your initial margin. So yeah, all is good. Check mark. There's the $10. So all of a sudden, you take a trade and look what happens to the price. We are moving southbound, right? And again, this is copyright from Futures Tradingpedia. So we got to say that. We found that over there. Heading downside, what's going to happen is as soon as you heat, hit your limit, you're going to get that margin call. And again, what that means is, okay, this is now against you $20. So it's now double your initial deposit. So you got to do a margin call and put more money into that account. Eventually, if the price keeps moving against you into what you're trading, whether that not be gold futures, NASDAQ, whatever the instrument is, you are eventually, hopefully not going to, but you may reach this level where, hey, I can no longer fork or stake the amount that is required for me to have this position, in which case you'll get the margin call, you'll get blown out, and in some cases, Brendan, traders will be forced to pay extra, and that means liquidating other accounts you may have with the broker, or you may be forced to deposit too much money and therefore declare bankruptcy, and we don't want that to ever happen. That is the riskiest part, guys, about trading futures, is the fact that you get such a huge leverage spot, and again, could lead to disaster. And not only understanding, uh, first of all, how much money is going to be required to even enter a trade, but to hold that trade against you, that's the key point there. So a uh, great, important topic there, understanding risk profile of each individual futures contract. Guys, if you're going to venture into the futures market, uh, very, very important to not only understand what the tick values are, but how much money is going to be required uh, to be put into an, a an account so a broker will even uh, let you have access to it. Hope that helped when it comes to uh, risk profile in the futures markets. Let's go to Valeria. Hey Brandon, thank you for this great explanation. Guys, please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.